Welcome to this next video to supplement the Chemistry 110 laboratory. In experiment 10, we continue our investigation of the properties of solutions. The major topics covered in this video include diffusion, osmosis, and dialysis. In order to be able to see these concepts at work in the lab, we must first learn how to perform various chemical tests to identify different solutes. From time to time, you may hear me use the more general term species to refer to solutes dissolved in the solution. The solutes in this experiment are the chloride ion, glucose, and starch. We are also going to be taking a look at the process of filtration through which we separate solids from liquids in a heterogeneous mixture. We begin this discussion with the topic of diffusion. Perhaps the simplest way to describe diffusion is as the process which occurs when a substance spreads out from a region where it's concentrated into a larger region. A more technical description of this process is that the solute is moving down a concentration gradient. This just means that if you were to monitor the concentration of the solute in some region from when diffusion first begins until some later point in time, the concentration of the solute in that region decreases as the particles which make up the solute spread out over an ever larger volume. Now, diffusion is quite important for gases and liquids, the so-called fluid states of matter. You'll recall that liquids and gases have particles that are in fairly rapid motion compared to solids, which ga with gas particles moving the most rapidly of all. Let's look at a familiar example. Imagine a skunk which is happily frolicking out in the woods. Suddenly, the skunk is surprised by an approaching coyote. In response, the skunk sprays the coyote with a mixture of chemicals which contains a class of chemicals called thiols. Now we'll be studying these chemicals in a later chapter. For now, it suffices to say that many thiols have an intensely unpleasant smell. Now even though we may be hundreds of feet away when this happens, we all know from experience that the smelly mixture produced by the skunk travels quite a distance from its source. Now, our ability to det detect the presence of the skunk is a result of the diffusion of the thiols from a region of high concentration to a wider volume over time. We can, of course, tell by that smell. I'm now going to make reference to a terrific video I saw on YouTube made by a pair of sisters who call themselves the Amoeba Sisters. Now one of them is actually a biologist and the other is an illustrator. They've put their talents together to make a series of videos on various topics, uh, mostly in the biological sciences. Please watch the video in the link I'm going to give you. You don't necessarily need to watch the entire video, but the first four minutes are particularly helpful. Ultimately, if you're going to be taking physiology, it's important that you understand all the concepts they cover, so it wouldn't hurt to watch the whole video at this time. I want you to focus on the example of the methylene blue in the fish aquarium, as it applies quite a bit to today's experiment. When you're done, please continue on to the second video for experiment 10.